What is going on YouTube? Today, I wanna to show you how to make a simple planter out of three cedar fence pickets. My name's Andy, this is Cedar River Woodworking, and welcome to the shop. So like I said, I wanted to make a simple planter out of three cedar fence pickets. And I wanna do this with as little scrap as possible. This is just a handful of scrap that's left over from this build. Before I show you this planner, I wanna thank everyone that has stopped by to the channel. You're really helping the channel grow. And I also want to thank all of the members of the channel. We have a giveaway that's coming up shortly. So if you wanna be a part of that, please consider being a member. But if not, and you like DIY, beginner woodworking projects, like what's to come, please consider subscribing. Now, while you're hitting that bell icon to get all the notifications, let's hop over to the bench and I'll show you exactly what this planner looks like. So here is our planter, all filled up and has a yucca cane inside of it. So it is about 15 inches by 15 inches. And uh, I have it lined with some plastic because I'm gonna have this inside, but I'm gonna put a tray underneath of it to catch some of the water. So there are some holes in the bottom of this plastic to allow for drainage. But uh, as you can see, it can hold a decent amount of weight. So let's jump over to the miter saw and I will show you exactly how we assemble this planter. All right, so here we are over at the miter saw and I am using three fence pickets. Now the sizing of a fence picket is going to be five and a half inches wide, six foot long and five eighths of an inch thick. So what we're gonna do to start this off is I'm gonna cut the ends off of these because they're typically pretty rough. They have a staple in the end of it and they're typically not square. So we are gonna cut the end off of these guys and I am just lining these up together because that's the fastest way that I can do this. And you can even see here that these aren't even the same width as each other. All right, just gonna put those off to the side here. And I'm going to take one of these fence pickets and put it off the side. We need to rip that down here in a later step. So now that we have the ends cut off of these, I need to mark this out for 14 inches. I have two still stacked on top of each other because these are going to be identical cuts. So at 14 inches, I'm gonna go ahead and line this up on the saw. And then I'm actually going to set a stop block for this. Now with a stop block, I'm gonna make sure that I have pressure on this side of the board, or I'm gonna make sure that the blade comes to a complete stop before lifting the blade up because if you don't, those teeth on the saw blade can get caught on the edge of there and you can get a kickback. And that'll throw the material at you or it will potentially damage your saw. All right, now that we have those four pieces cut out, we're going to go ahead and move our stop block to 12 and three quarters of an inch. So now that this is set to 12 and three quarters of an inch, I'm going to go ahead and cut six of these pieces. That should be the rest of these boards here. And then this is what you're gonna have left over for scrap. Not a whole lot left over. So now that we have those six pieces cut at 12 and three quarters, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that stop block right there. We're gonna jump over to the table saw and we're gonna rip down the third fence pick. Over here at the table saw, we're gonna go ahead and set our fence to one and 11 sixteenths. That is a 16th inch less than three quarters an inch. What an inch and 11 sixteenths is going to do for us is make sure that we have three equal size cuts out of this board. So let's go ahead and get those cut. I'm gonna set the saw blade here just above the height of this board. Now a rule of thumb of setting the height of your blade is to make sure that the gullets of these teeth here aren't completely above the height of your board here. That way it'll allow sawdust to be completely evacuated from the cut and you're gonna get cleaner cuts that way. Now with those ripped out, we're gonna jump back over to the miter saw and finish the cuts on these. After that, we get to assemble this planter. Back here at the miter saw, our stop lock is still set to 12 and three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna make one cut at that 12 and three quarters. Now 
Then this piece we're gonna set off to the side. This is going to be the framework for the top. Then I'm gonna grab the other two pieces that were cut, and I'm gonna set this stop lock to 16 inches. So what I like to do when I'm setting these stop locks is I mark where I'm gonna cut. Then I line it up with my saw blade, and then I slide my stop lock up to it. This will help with a lot of fiddling of trying to set up your stop lock. Now we're gonna cut all of these out. This is going to be eight pieces of 16 inch cuts. I do have these two pieces stacked on top of each other to make more efficient cuts. Here is some more scrap that we have. Still not a lot of scrap out of this three fence picket build. Now we haven't cut the framework for the top yet because these fence pickets can be a little bit different sizes when they make them. So what we're actually gonna do is use referential measurements on those pieces. So we're gonna wait and cut the frame after we get this box assembled. Let's go over to the bench and assemble this planter. So over here at the bench, we have all of our parts laid out and we are going to assemble this planter. There's a couple of things that I'm going to need. I have an 18 gauge brad nailer loaded up with one inch brad nails, some tight bond three original wood glue. This wood glue is outdoor rated, it is waterproof. This is the stuff that you need for all of your outdoor projects. Then I'm also going to use an Allen key. Now that might be a weird one. I'll show you why we need that for a second. So we're gonna take two of our 14 inch pieces. If you want, you can find the good looking sides, put them face down on your bench. And this is where that Allen key comes into play. I'm gonna space these an eighth of an inch apart. I have an eighth inch Allen key, and I'm just gonna stick it between them to give me my proper spacing. This is just gonna give a reveal, give us some separation between the boards. So we're gonna lay those out, line up the edges here. You can use another board to line that up. Then we're gonna go ahead and put some wood glue on the edges here. I'm gonna take two of our 16 inch pieces and lay them across the side here. Make sure that's flush with the top and we're gonna drive in two nails into each board. Now the strength of this is not gonna come from the nails, it's actually gonna come from the glue that we have in here. We're gonna go ahead and make another panel just like that one. So we have two more 16 inch pieces. And we're gonna space them at eighth of an inch and glue and brad nail those together. Now, if you like projects like this, please let me know in the comments what other fence picket builds that you would make that are similar to this one that I can show you guys and share with the world. Just gonna put some more brad nails in here. Now, if you're interested in any of the items that I use, the tools, things like that, I will have them linked in the video description below. So now that we have two panels made up, we're gonna go ahead and put another 16 inch piece on the sides here. Now, this side is going to be our show face, so we want the edge of that other 16 inch piece to line up with the front of that. We're gonna glue and brad nail this one as well. I'm just kind of being cautious of glue squeeze out here. So I don't have a ton of glue on here, but I wanna make sure that I get good adhesion. So lined up with the top and the front, we are going to brad nail these together again. Now when you're doing edges like this, be careful. Don't have your fingers right where the brad nail's going in. These do have a tendency sometimes to kick off to the side and you don't want to nail it into your finger. So we're gonna do that to both sides. Put that 16 inch piece here, glue and brad nails. If you are liking this build so far, let me know. Uh, the best way to let me know is by subscribing to the channel. 
It helps us out, helps us grow, and it lets me know that you wanna see more projects like this one. Just like that, we have one side done. We need to make another panel that is identical to that. So same process on this guy. Now that we have what I'll call these two long panels put together, we're gonna assemble the sides of these. So what I can do is stand these on end here, and I'm gonna put a dab of glue inside of here. Make sure you knock over your panel. And then our short pieces, we're going to find our pretty side and put that towards our bench. Now what this is, it's going to establish our short sides. Because we have the thickness of these two outside pieces, it's actually gonna give us a box, so a square. Instead of having a rectangle, because these are shorter, we are compensating for the thickness of the outside pieces. So line the top up here on both sides, making sure that your ends are tight and then we're gonna put two brad nails in each side here. We're gonna use the same eighth inch spacer trick on this bottom piece and drive in our two brad nails. And if you guessed that we're gonna do the same thing to this open side here, you are absolutely correct. So now we have what looks like a planner, but we can't hold anything because there's no bottom. I'm going to set it on its side. And these last three pieces, they are that 12 and three quarter. We want them facing the same direction as our short side. So that's gonna come in here like this. And uh, we're gonna get those nailed into place as well. The easiest way to do that is to have the short faces vertical so that I can put these in place because I'm also going to glue these as well. So I'm gonna put some glue across the bottom edge here and try to do some across the top. Now you might get, might get a drip on this. It's unfortunate, but uh, this is about the only way that we can glue this. So we're gonna Stick that in there and nail it into place. Now I'm doing these two big pieces towards the outside and then the smaller piece is going to go in the center. There will be a little bit of gapping there for water drainage. I'm gonna flip it over so that we can get this completely nailed together. Now I am flexing the box just a little bit so I get good contact on the ends of this board. One more thing that you could do is you could put a cleat across the bottom so that these are supported underneath. This one I just wanted to do out of three fence pickets. I, I wanted to use as little scrap as possible. But uh, to me, honestly, that's probably the better idea. And uh, in a future video, I'll, I'll probably show you what I mean exactly by that. So we're gonna use that last piece to make a frame across the top here. We're gonna to cut some 45s on it and use some referential measurements. So these pieces here are going to be 15 inches long across this side and it looks like maybe 15 and a quarter this direction. So there could be a little bit of differences in the bowing and cupping of these boards, but uh, let's go ahead and get these cut and finish out this planner. All right, to finish out this planner, it's gonna be a lot of the similar processes. We are going to glue and brad nail this. I have these set up so that they go directly to the outside of these legs. And that's why we wanted to use referential measurements. It's a good idea to do that in all of your projects because sometimes plans aren't quite exactly how you want them to be. And I am going to go around the perimeter here instead of setting the two outsides and then doing the two cross pieces. This is just gonna help us have a little bit better 
framework on the top of this. Now, if you finish this and you have some gaps in the corners of your box or in your framework, you should probably check out our tuning video that we have to help fix that problem. So here is our finished planter. If you have some rocking like this one does, it's probably because all of the distortion in these pickets, they're meant to be kind of a rough fence build, but um, we're using it for a little bit more furniture here. So how we can fix that is we can go over to our table saw and set our fence just shorter than the shortest foot that you have. So in this case, you could probably set it to 16 inches and be perfectly fine. You're gonna flip it on its side and then run it through and it's gonna cut all of your feet at exactly the same length. Now, if this is a build that you liked, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, and let me know down in the comments below what future projects that you would like to see made out of fence pickets. Is there a different type of planner that you would like to see? Bigger, smaller, tapered, tiered? Start off your comment with that so I know that you got to this point in the video. For now, my name has been Andy, this has been Cedar River Woodworking, and we'll see you in the next video.